Well, we're, we're particularly interested in interferon and polycythemia vera, particularly me, because I introduced its treatment for the disease in 1988. And the reason for using it at that time was because PV has many chemiologic and clinical characteristics similar to chronic myeloid leukemia, although, as I just mentioned, the basic biology is totally different. But we really didn't realize that at that time. And because of the similarities of the disease, clinically, we thought that it might be a good drug to use uh, in, uh, in polycythemia vera. And in fact, uh, interferon was very, very effective in producing clinical and hematologic responses in the first cohort of patients, the first 50 patients that we treated. And we use interferon because the most commonly used drug, hydroxyurea, or as they say in Europe, hydroxycarbamide, uh, has many side effects uh, and, uh, well, turn, and it may be leukemogenic. In our opinion, it is. It causes other neoplasms, which interferon does not. Interferon is not leukogenic, but it has its other side effects. So alternative treatments uh, were required. It is of interest that only recently that we understand the basic biology, why interferon is so effective. And in contrast to hydroxyurea, which is a nonspecific cell poison, interferon affects the PV stem cell. It makes it cycle, leading to its eventual exhaustion. And that is basically uh, summarizes the uh, reason why interferon is so effective in this disease, producing remissions in the order of 80 to 90 percent in untreated patients, previously untreated patients. Our group uh, recently published from Wild Cornell the end results of treating many patients with polycythemia vera over a period of 40 to 50 years. We found that interferon include, uh, interferon results in not only prolonging the myelofibrosis uh, free survival, that is to say the development of myelofibrosis, which is an end stage characteristic of polycythemia vera, but it also prolongs overall survival compared to hydroxyurea and far better than phlebotomy only, which is a treatment of choice in so-called low-risk patients as defined by the European Leukemia Act. Now, it should be noted that the standard treatment until very, very recently was for low-risk patients, that is, patients under the age of 60 with no history of thrombosis, were treated with phlebotomy only, that is to say, removal of blood. We think that's really inappropriate because we have found, as has others, that patients with polycythemia vera are highly symptomatic at the time of disease, uh, at the time of diagnosis of disease, that phlebotomy results in iron deficiency, which has its own significant consequences, and that uh, and, and that uh, uh, this is allowing the, the fire to burn, so to speak, without really treating the basic mechanisms of why people have polycythemia very only treating the, the symptom or the signs. There's no question that phlebotomy will reduce the thrombotic component because we reduce the elevated red blood cell mass. But the basic disease progresses in our uh, review of more than 470 patients uh, that we analyze using methods of artificial intelligence and methods for data retrieval, that we found that phlebotomy leads to long-term results that are far inferior to either hydroxyurea or interferon. So we, we think these, these, uh, these uh, criteria that were established by the ELN and the National Cancer Comprehensive Cancer Center in the, in the United States should be revised. Now, it is important that they have been uh, revisions by the NCC in, in the United States because there is a new drug called Rolpeg interferon, which has to be uh, administered only every two to four weeks. Uh, it, is, uh, it is biologically a little different than the other interferons. It is only one isoform compared to 10 or 11 of the typical uh, interferon. 
um, and it has a, a different form of pegylation, allowing for this two to four week administration. Uh, the results that were first generated in Europe by Professor Gisslinger show that using this medication, superior long-term results compared to hydroxyurea will occur by five years. That has been known from phase two trials, but this was the first large randomized trial that has shown this. And uh, our, our, uh, I, I should also add that interferon had been used also beginning in the, in the late 80s and 90s in Europe extensively by Professor Gisslinger and Hasselbach in Denmark, Gisling in Austria, Hasselbach in Denmark, and Kalajian in France. I want to acknowledge uh, their uh, lead efforts as well as our own in the United States. We're actually very good colleagues and friends, and our results are very, very similar. What is very important also is a study by Professor Barbui showing that in low-risk patients, the ones that heretofore have been treated by phlebotomy only, that the use of low peg interferon gave much better results in these low risk patients with respect to hematocrit control, symptom control, overall uh, sense of well being uh, in a short term study. So I'm sure that the European Leukemia Net will probably be formally changing their recommendations because of these, this very important study by Professor Babui and his colleagues.